Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to another video from, of course, yours truly, Death Scavenger. And today we're going up against Asnak guy, I don't know, as of course, Eric, and um, he's a TBU uh, player and actually an LBA player for that, so also soon to hit stuff. And of course, a good friend of mine. And we decided to have a Yu Yu game like way back when the TBU was going for a break, and uh, I got really sick, he got really sick. And we haven't been able to really recover to do a battle, but I actually did upload it yesterday, so I wanted to upload my, my side of this battle, of course, too. Because this was a really good one. Uh, before going into this battle, I decided to not bring Jardos and actually bring Crawlons instead, because I felt that Jardos would just eradicate anything he's going to bring against me. I knew it was having no issue whatsoever. Um, what I didn't really calc for, or you know, anticipate it for, was of course how badly this team was against a potential Infernape. Uh, when I say potentially Infernape, I mean god freaking damn Infernape is there. Um, definitely a big threat, of course, hitting if super effectively on the three of my mods actually, which is just all kinds of hell. And of course, Mag Punch is something that is I'm not particularly fond of being weak to. Never be weak to priority. Um, that's the price you pay for bringing heal. His heal is a great response to Crow Q, so that's why he's here in the first place. But anyway, he's gonna bring Infernape. Rose Rage, Zactos, Beedrill, Maloric, and Fortress. The thing is here, uh, or, uh, and I bring, of course, uh, Entei, Metagross, Mammoth Swine, uh, Crawdon, Scarfed, uh, Mian Xiao, and uh, Spex, Hillisk. Uh, um, so, anyway, going into this game, I knew or I was hoping that he was going to bring his Fortress from the beginning, and I'm just going to bring Entei and start off with that. The thing is that um, even though I'm banded, Sacrifier has a 50% chance of you know hitting in. And uh, that would be probably my best overall gameplay since I don't have any spinner on this team, which is something I kind of realized while I was going in that, you know, damn, no defogger, what's up with that? Uh, but yeah, you know, nothing really serious more than that. I was like simple planning, I knew what I had to kill and basically go from there. So, with all this in my guys, let's go. I was so close to pressing the wrong button there and just erase all of it. Uh, anyway, let's do it. So, um, yeah, he's gonna bring the Tick Tick Boom, which of course is the Fortress. So, I do a real nice startup play here. And I'm just going for Sacred Fire, like I said. If I get it burned, that pretty much means his stir is, gonna, stir is gonna be wasted. If the stir is wasted, it also means that he's getting pretty much just one hazard up and then it's gonna die. Um, I was a bit surprised to see that actually it's leftovers and not Cust Up Berry. Consider Cust Up is a really nice thing to have with the combination of Sturdy. So, anyway, he gets his rocks up, that's fine. And, um,. In conjunction with that, um, the burn, like I said, is enough to kind of kill him here, so I was really glad. I did a very, very tough first play here, very much hoping for the best. He could have backed fire if it was my lord, but it wasn't, which was, of course, good for me. Uh, he's going to bring Shuck here, which of course is uh, Zapdos. I know that a Thunderbolt is not enough to put me in a bad area, but he's going to go for a Volt Switch, and he's actually scoring a crit here. Which is unfortunate, because that means that I do die to Rock's damage after that, which was something I was not really fond of, because I wanted a Sacred Fire hit on something else that's gonna come after, or potentially the Sap of itself, and then save myself a bit with Extreme Speed, because I need that against, of course, Mac Punching Infernape. Now, if that did not come into fruition, so I basically died to Rock's, which also means that I'm forced to stay in. And uh, I will say that Sacred Fire does a lot of damage on this Melodic, it really, really does hurt it. But um, the thing is here, no, I can't deny it, um, Eric is a defensive player, which means he's going to try to preserve the Malorg as good as he can. Uh, I'm not doing enough damage to force it out, and being locked pretty much means that I'm forced to just keep going. Like I said, I do die to rocks anyway, so there's no point of really switching out. And I don't want to potentially, like, s s what do you call it, um, scout for the potential skull if final comes and don't take that with a dry skin. I'm just, I'm not going to do that. Uh, by the way, he's gonna get to enough recovery here to actually hit back a hit. The thing was here, I was so close, he was gonna peep to stall me. Uh, you know, I'm pretty much uh, make me die to struggle, which he has the potential of actually doing. Luckily, he doesn't do that, but that would have been just so bad. Um, so, anyway, here comes the fourth sacrifice. I haven't missed one so far either, which is incredible. And here comes the skull, and of course, that's gonna take out my poor, poor Entei who was not favorable in this match whatsoever. He did have a good first turn, but that crit bolt switch definitely took it back a bit. You know, that's fine. 
that's fine. Um, so I'm just gonna bring heal this here, and the thing is, um, Hyper Voice Specs is not enough to kill Milotic, but Milotic can't really do anything to me either. So I was thinking that I might as well do as much damage as possible with that. There's no reason to go for Bolt Switch because it still has a Rose Raid, and the Rose Raid can actually eat that up since it's very, very natural bulky. So I'm just going for Hyper Voice Legacy here, and dude, damn. It definitely does a lot of damage, and he's forced to pretty much sack Rose Raid. Um, it didn't really matter too much because Rose Raid is not potentially a threat to my overarching team anyway, so if he's gonna sack something, that was probably his best play. So he's gonna bring Caesar here, and I'm just gonna scarf his set, basically. Scarf set. I'm gonna look at his set. And the thing is, I was thinking I could be focus sashed, so I'm just gonna go to my um, Metagross basically to take this uh, Mag Punch. And he's gonna show me that he's Life Orb, and um, I probably should have gone for a Bullet Punch here. Um, I have some defensive investment, but you know it's not a whole lot. And uh, basically, just gonna go for Flare Blitz, and that takes out the Metagross. There is no way I'm taking that. So, like I said, I don't really know why I didn't go for Bullet Punch. Get some seal damage. It was kind of bad. And the next play doesn't make any sense either because I actually decided to go into Crawlons. Uh, Chronons has a chance of living, um, but uh, it's not a whole lot, and I kind of realized that, so I just stayed put. Uh, luckily, it just switched out, which is, of course, lucky for me, because I'm gonna honest and say that that was probably the worst play I made throughout this match, because I do have a proper response to that, and of course, Mian Chao, uh, but I didn't do that, and that could have paid me dearly. It really, really could. So anyway, he switched out to Melodic, and, you know, I expect his Melodic to maybe go for Toxic here, it dies to a knockoff, and I have no reason setting up a sword stance because I will die to Mag Punch. Um, so my Kronos is wasted this battle whatsoever. So I just go for Sally and hoping for a Scald. Either Scald or Toxic, I would have been fine either way. But he actually goes for Scald, and that's incredible because that means I get my HP back, which is what I'm going for. And the best part here is that I can go for a Volt Switch and pretty much you know decide what Pokemon I want to go to. Um, there should be. Like, I shouldn't really lock myself into Hyper Voice because that only means that Caesar is going to come back on. And that's something I really don't want to. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry for that, guys. Like I said, still sick. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go to uh, my Scarf Mian Chao because it can hurt everything in his team outside of Zapdos or not hurting a lot. So he's going to Sting. And Sting is, of course, a B drill. And I don't know what went through Eric's mind here. He shouldn't have pursued me to be Scarf, but you know what? He just went for it anyway. And he goes for Protect here, and I think at the same time it does that, he kind of realized that, oh no, he could be Scarfed, and he has no switch in for that. And um, what that basically means is that he's going to lose something and decide to sack off Beeril, which is probably the best move here. Uh, so he only has um, his, um, what do you call it? His Zapdos and his um, Infernape left, and I'm still at four mods left behind me. And I decided here, you know, I'm thick fat, he could go for Heat Wave or Thunderbolt, and uh, I could take both of those hits with Lorelei, which of course is my Mammoth Swine, and actually force it down with Ice Shard quite a lot. And uh, that's what I do. And he actually goes for Heat Wave, but it does miss that, which leaves me an opportunity to actually go for a knockoff. Now, I should have gone for Stealth Rocks, I don't know. I don't know at all why I went for a knockoff here. There was no reason for me of doing so since he'll exactly outspeed it. I should have just gone, like I said, for a potential stealth rocks and go for Ice Shard. And the thing, the reason I actually try to measure you guys that I actually have opportunities to hurt the Infernip a little bit more is because the game is gonna throw me one hell of a counter argument. Like I said, I have three months weak to Mag Punch, but luckily I have, like I said, a scarfed. Um, Yen Shao back behind me, so I shouldn't really have to worry about this position whatsoever uh, because I pretty much got into the game. He, he can't hurt me whatsoever, and I'm just gonna go and decide here to go for a high jump kick. There's no ramification for me doing so and just finish up this game. And um, I think most people would have done the same. I mean, knockoff kills the Inferno from this range, but you know what? Just let's go for a high jump kick and miss. Yeah, so that's GG, and that's how Eric wins this game. I, <laughs> you know what? I wasn't really, I wasn't mad at all actually at this game because you know if you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose like that. I mean, I have every opportunity to finish off this game in the way I saw fitted, but I decided to you know finish it off with a bang, and with a bang I did. 
right in the freaking wall and <laughs> pretty much knocked out my Mian Xiao. So yeah, I will say this, uh, you know, GG and everything because it was like a very, very fun game. But damn, I know the outcome of this game and you know the outcome of this game. And this is actually the first time Eric defeats me in a tier-based battle actually. Which is kind of funny to think about it because that was probably the edge I had over him until now. That uh, while he beats me in league games, I do defeat him in the smogon based games. So that was that was unfortunate. And like I said, the crits on Entei does to some extent matter because I did want to kind of reserve it to the last uh, situation, basically for a Bandit Extreme Speeds. That was basically what I was going for. But it wasn't over until then because you know I could have gone for, of course, a Bullet Punch uh, on my Metagross, which actually put it in a position where. It actually would have died to life from damage, but you know what? Also, a second situation where I just could go for rocks with Mammoth Swine because I had the opportunity to do it, so I did not do it because I didn't need to because I had a Scarf Mian Shop. But you know what? He didn't feel like winning either, so my team is basically filled with losers. And I can't accept that. <laughs> no, in all honesty, I thought this game was great. You know, if you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose like that. And of course, this being a friendly battle and all, all that makes that loss that much better. It's one of those losses that had it been in a league, I would probably have been upset for days. But as it stands here, that was just awesome. You know, that's that's a one way to lose. It's definitely just your Pokemon just that. Fuck their shits. <laughs> I'm clocking in early. Uh, but yeah, Eric, like I said, thank you so much for this battle. And if everybody's watching, make sure to actually check out Eric's channel also. He's an upcoming PokéTuber. I mean, he's been doing it for up a year now. But he definitely needs more play to watch him. He's a really good player. Um... And uh, honestly, um, you really need to watch this guy. And he does upload every day. And hopefully I will too. Now that I got a bit more <clears throat> healthier. Did not cough in the middle of that game, huh? Uh, but anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, guys, take care. Bye.